Okay, I gotta get this out of my system here for my head. But I'm gonna try to do my best for this one. Going for the kill. Oh boy. But here we go. Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As I mentioned this before, I love the original 1988 horror classic Child's Play. The story about a serial killer who has um, taken a voodoo ritual, goes around killing people until he finally gets his last hour after being chased down by a cop. And the only way to um, bring a new life was to be possessed by a good guy's Dow. And that's how he became simply Chucky the Dow. Um, it was definitely um, incredibly, had a lot of excellent writing, some amazing um, visual effects that they used at the time especially with the movements of the the Chucky Dow and how they created it and how they create all the other good guys Dows out there which no matter which names they come up with I mean it's all done practically Brad Dorf gives a a chilling performance playing the role um, you also got a great cast right there you got um, Catherine Hicks uh, playing the Karen, you know, the mother, who has a son named Andy, who's of course played by Alex Vincent's. Great performance, too. You got Chris Sarandon, uh, Dinah Menoff, and many others that follow. Um, they did manage to put a few comic elements in it. But for the most part, it's a supernatural horror film. It became so popular. It was all done by writer Domencini, joining in with John Lafia and uh, Tom Holland. Yeah, he's the co-writer and the director of the film. And who couldn't forget the line, Friends to the End. And yes, Annie's saying, this is the end, friend. Yeah, it was released by United Artists under uh, MGM. Yeah, and it was only a small budget, $9 million. Made tons of money. It went up to $44.2 million. And it became a popular franchise um, given to another studio, Universal. And that's how we got the sequels, Charles Play 2 and 3. And then we get the, the follow-ups, the spin-offs, uh, Bride of Chucky, joining in with Jennifer Tilly, uh, which I know we had Catherine Heigl and, and uh, John Ritter in it. Then there's Seed of Chucky, which had John Waters, uh, Red Man, just like a behind the scenes type and yeah they had to go for a new idea and then of course seeing that uh, Tiffany the character that Jennifer Tilly played since Bride of Chucky um, well well she has a son and they named her Glenda well that was a disappointment and then we had those direct-to-video sequels to follow, which is Curse of Chucky, followed by Cold of Chucky. Now, I, and as I'm reviewing this already, um, I still haven't seen Cold of Chucky yet, but hey, I'll, I'll take my chances, okay? I really will, this time around. And now we're actually going to get a TV series that follows. So Brad Dorff's still going to continue on joining in with Don Bassini. But now, since I just did a trailer reaction, as I mentioned already, the new reboot of Child's Play, 
which definitely is not doing any justice to the 1988 film whatsoever, being released by Ryan Pictures, joining in with United Artists Releasing, which is kind of ironic seeing that this is the same company that gave us the original, only it's a, a new name under MGM and Annapurna Pictures. But sad to say, that company is now struggling. After a few of their films are, were not doing very well at the box office, including Missing Link and Booksmart. Yeah, but too bad that this movie, for some stupid reasons, I'm sorry, but I don't understand the fact that this movie is getting a pass. You know, I noticed that there are some critics out there who are actually liking this movie more. Some people even say they liked it more than the original, which I don't understand. They praise it for the dark humor and all this other crap, even for its tone. But yes, they did found it inconsistent, which that's exactly what it was. It's totally inconsistent. And it's becoming a moderate box office success. Child's Play is the most popular franchise of all time. So of course, you know, they're going to make more money. But it's just sad that this one had to make more money than than ever before. Instead of uh, Brad Dorf playing the role, it's Mark Hamill. Yes, Mark Hamill who's been best known for playing Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars films and he's also been best known for doing the voice of the Joker in the TV show Batman the Animated Series and some of the various uh, Batman uh, movies that we had, yeah, those animated films even the other Batman series uh, like The Adventures of Batman and Robin uh, Batman vs Superman Batman and Superman adventures and all of that. He's been voicing the uh, Joker for a very long time. And he has played a lot of uh, extensive roles in, in his career when he's not playing the uh, Skywalker. Yeah, because he does play a lot of different roles here and there. But I thought his portrayal as Chucky is just a cash-in role. That's all it is. He's just He's just there for a paycheck. It's bad enough that when he got to play Luke Skywalker one more time in The Last Jedi, he turns into a miserable old fool. And that's sad. I understand because he didn't want to do this. And, and, I, I, and the fact that Disney had to mess things up already with the franchise and and the fact that they're treating him like shit too, it's ridiculous. That he had to agree to do this one. That's just sad. And if that wasn't enough, we got Audrey Plaza. Yes, Audrey Plaza, the the actress who's been known for several films in, in this decade, such as uh, Safety Not Guarantee. Um, or any other film that she's been in. Um, yes, and even Mike and Dave Neat Wedding Dates. Which, believe it or not, I just picked it up recently at the 99 cents store. <laughs> the 99 cents only store. <laughs> yeah, which, I did bought a bad film, but you know what? Even I'd rather watch that than, than this movie again. Th then you got, like, uh, Gabriel Bateman now he's playing Andy, and I had to say, the way he played the role, I mean, he's a complete, total dick. A dumbass. And fucking boring, too. And yes, he's deaf. What a change. And he's a lot older than Andy in the original film. Yeah, the original in the original film, though, Andy was six years old. Here he's 13 years old, so he's too old for Dallas. But he ends up getting it anyway. I just can't take this guy.
too seriously. He's just a fucking idiot. You got Brian Tyree Henry playing Detective Mike Norris. Yeah, he's black. You even got the kids who are the neighbors uh, next door that Annie became friends with. They're basically rejects from other recent horror films that we've seen, like It, Stephen King's It, that we've been getting these days. I know we have part two already. <laughs> Doing pretty well at the box office. Or any other movie, or maybe something out of Goosebumps, or, or uh, Scary Stories in the Dark. I haven't even seen that one, but two times better than that. We got Tim Matterson playing the CEO of Kaslin. Yeah, so he plays Henry Kaslin. So he's the one who's the creator of of all the buddy dolls, among all the other digital technology that we had. You know, all all the mobile devices, you know, robotics, uh, vacuum cleaners, USBs, all all of this this technology that we're getting in today's digital world. It's just too much, man. And that's what they're trying to do for this dumbed-down generation we're in. Yeah, they want to go for a new change of pace. Let's just bring in a cyborg version of Chucky. Instead of being a good guy's Dow, it's a buddy Dow. And, and the way they made Chucky in this movie, he looks completely ugly and hideous. I don't like the way he does these mouth movements that he does. And and the fact that he changes his eyes at times, you know, going from blue to red. Yeah, when he gets a lot meaner. He does all these weird expressions and mouth movements. Oh, brother, man. And the fact that he gets an influence through television and all this other stuff. So that's why he started going around killing people we're gonna to get to that too and then there's a lot of stupid scenes in this film that we're gonna to get to also it's just I don't understand okay I know I know I know it's hard to believe if Ryan Pitchers released this they're gonna give us uh, Mambo an internet cessation a horror film did you know that? Wow, this company really is starting to fail. That's sad, man. I mean, Orion did put out uh, a few good movies here and there, maybe some pretty rare ones, but it's it's really sad when this is the company best known for giving us Robocop, the original, along with its sequels, yeah, the entire the franchise alone. Signs of the Lambs and all of that. Even the Terminator. But that was the original company before it was revived. So they they really need to keep up with their own levels because this is what's happening. Okay, well, let's get to this review of this terrible reboot. Because it really fucking sucks balls. It stars Audrey Plaza once again, Gabriel Bateman, Brian Tyree Henry, Tim Madison from Animal House, uh, as well as Fletch, uh, Up the Creek, among others. Uh, he was also in the movie by Stephen King called uh, Sometimes they come back. Yeah. Well, it was based on the Stephen King novel. Marlon um, Cassidy, Beatrice Kesso, Ty Consigilio, David Lewis, Trent Redicope, Carlise Burke, Nicole Anthony, and Mark Campbell. Yes, yeah, Star Wars, Batman the Animated Series. All the other Batman shows, animated series, and, and uh, some others uh, that he's been doing for the past couple of years. It's written by Tyler Burton Smith, you know, based on Child's Play by Don Mazzini. 
along with John Lafia and Tom Holland, and it's directed by Lars Caveberg. The movie begins when we had a company called Kaslin Corporation that's run by corporate CEO Henry Kaslin, played by Tim Matterson, who just launched a high-tech DAO called Buddy. They decided to use this DAO to actually connect through other Kaslin products, you know, all these digital products that we have that works. I mean, yes, you can even put a USB code straight into uh, the DAO and get to recharge your, your cell phones and mobile devices and stuff. Even the <laughs> tablets and stuff. And the fact that this is going to be sold millions uh, worldwide at every single at every single place, at every store out there, millions of children are going to start buying them. And it will be the perfect Christmas gift what it seems. Um, in Vietnam there's a buddy assembly factory where an employee got fired by a supervisor for all of his insufficient work that he had to deal with. Which at that point on the employee actually manipulates the Dow and that's when he actually kills him. Just dumps him just threw him and went straight down into the car. It almost looked like he committed suicide. <sighs> wow, what a beginning. And it was during a thunderstorm too. So it's like they're trying to be, you know, more creepy and chilling, just like in the beginning where, you know, the soup, where of course Charlie Ray, a serial killer, was about to possess him into, by using his voodoo into the Tao and that's when you get like a huge thunderstorm and you see all the clouds uh, you know, coming in up straight from the toy store okay well yeah they try to do that or I think they were trying to be more like the scene in uh, Child's Play 2 because, yeah, they had a toy factory over there. And when they tried to work on all the the good guys' dolls, I mean, yes. Uh, there was a scene in that movie where one of the good guys' dolls suddenly got possessed into the machine. So that means he's going to come back to life. Yeah, actually uh, threw out one guy out of the window and then... But in Chicago, we meet a retail clerk named Karen Barclay, played by Audrey Plaza. The way she keeps making those facial expressions, I mean, she looked pretty bored. You can even tell. Uh, I knew I was in trouble when there was one... Uh, <laughs> there was one um, customer that just came in who was about to pick out uh, one of the buddy dolls and... He was talking about, you know, which gender did they have. And she even says, we are not allowed to say that. Oh, great. You know, it's, is that what they're going to do for, for this PC world that we're not allowed to say which gender? That's stupid. Anyway. Yeah, she does have her 13-year-old hearing impaired son, Andy. Yeah, because he's deaf. And he's played by Gabriel Bateman. They just moved to their new apartment. Almost similar to the apartment in the original. But, but almost faintly different here. Um, where Karen was encouraged her son to actually make friends with all the neighbor friends out there. Yes, because he actually does make friends with, with uh, several of the kids. Uh, next door because not only that but he's going to have his upcoming uh, birthday so at that rate he's going to be 14 yeah um, of course um, seeing that uh, Karen does work at the store and by the way the store that she works at though is, is sort of like a a deadbeat Kmart 
Yeah, the way it's designed, I mean, with the side of Target and the mix of Goodwill. Yeah, because if you go to Goodwill, I mean, yes, you do see how the store really uh, looks, you know, with all the stuff and items together. I mean, it looks completely dumpy. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> Compared to the original with um, when Karen was working at a, uh, a local department store. And that felt like a real department store right there. I know, I know, I know. I'm going through back and forth here. Um, not only that, but Karen also has a boyfriend named Shane, and he's played by David Lewis, who's a complete asshole. You know, he's totally mean and abusive. Uh, we also learned that Andy actually has a cat named, you're going to love this, Mickey Rooney. Yes, a celebrity name of a legendary actor. I'm even surprised they didn't name them Justin Bieber. Pfft. Yeah, very clever filmmakers. Uh, but anyway, it's a cute cat, orange type, which apparently he calls him a total dick. There's going to be animal cruelty in the scene. And once I talk about this. But for an early birthday gift, yes, he does receive a buddy doll. Karen did blackmail her boss, and that's when she decided to take the doll anyway as a birthday gift for Andy. Even though he was too old for dolls. Which names itself Chucky. <laughs> this time voiced by Mark Campbell. The way he speaks, though, kind of, well, yeah, at times he does start to sound a little bit like uh, <laughs> a bit of Luke Skywalker there, or maybe a bit of himself, um, but you don't hear him more uh, terrorizing like you know, when he does the voice of the Joker. Oh, and there's also a Star Wars reference in the movie, too. Yes, he even says Han Solo. Like, I was expecting maybe Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, he calls in to the Dow, um, because, yes, he does say he's too old for it. Well, I didn't even try. He also connects that with his uh, cell phone, his iPhone that he has. I believe it's iPhone 7, because I have that as well. So he gets to recharge um, his phone, gets to do everything, watch some movies and stuff on there. And suddenly he becomes attached to it, so now, well, he gets to communicate uh, with the Dow and just play with him for a while, you know, acting like he's his best friend, you know, friends to the end. But, yes, I mean, he did mention about uh, he has a cat named Mickey Rooney, and then he, he, um, he also mentions about um, <laughs> Shane, because, yeah, he's an asshole. But then he is also trying to tell him not to harm everyone, okay? Yeah, because seeing that this style is a cyborg, I mean, yes, he can actually record voices, he can even record videos, he can do anything, he can do a lot of stuff. He can spy, you know. He can influence through a movie that they just watched, which is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. A better movie than this crap that I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, way better film, actually. Yeah, I mean, this is where he gets all the influence from. So now he's going to become as chilling as ever before. Uh, yeah, so he's mimicking all the violence that he's doing, so he's, he's becoming a bad influence for everything that um, he experiences. Also cursing and stuff, so that way he could do a lot of evil shit. Yeah. Well, anyway, I know, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself again. It's, it's pissing me off. But Chucky does help Andy be friends with two other children. 
next door. There's a girl, and then there's a boy. Uh, both both of them are Fawn and, and Pug. And there's other kids joining in. They go around doing all these uh, violent tendencies, like for example, one of the kids started to grab a knife and started to do a stabbing technique through a unicorn, a unicorn doll. And he, and he says, this is for Tupac. Yeah, as in Tupac Shakur. So he's he's like uh, mimicking all the the references that they had to say. I mean, god damn it. Even the the scene where uh, Mickey Rooney actually scratches uh, Andy, and this is where Chucky had to strangle the cat. I couldn't believe it. And then next thing you know, he kills him. And yes. Even Chucky admits it. It goes on. Because it could get much worse after that. Because he's going to go on a killing spree later. Mostly because he's getting all these influences. At times, like, Andy didn't even believe what Chucky was doing. Or or he wasn't so sure Chucky did all this stuff. And then he's going around you know, scaring people. Even the Shane. Which, we're going to get to that scene where Shane actually was about to go back to the house. We learned that he was actually married. He has uh, two daughters. They're not paying attention because they're just, you know, on their tablets or their phones mostly, just watching, you know, their movies or, or playing video games or something. You know, they have their headphones, so they couldn't pay attention. He was about to take out all these Christmas lights uh, on top of the roof, and then suddenly, Chucky arrives. Um, he has the the lawnmower join in. Where he just uh, just drags him down, and he actually broke his leg. Yes. And after that, um, this is for going for the kill here. Chucky actually takes the lawnmower and slashes his face, and later ripped it off. Skins him. Yeah, actually skins his face and places it into. I think it was a, a melon or possibly a ball. It might be a melon. But he placed it all the way straight into his face, all wrapped around, using all these uh, <laughs> all these staplers and stuff. So, great. So now we have <laughs> the face of, uh, of Shane. Because... <laughs> Yes, uh, during the investigation, uh, Detective Mike Norris uh, had spotted um, Shane, and he noticed that his his head is all ripped apart. And now uh, you can only see his skull. Wow, very beautiful attack. Uh, and yes, they did have practical effects. Um, you can really pretty much tell that they didn't use CGI during that scene, but nevertheless. So, both, so Annie decided to hide um, the head of uh, Shane, his entire skin wrapped around, and they had to give it to the next door neighbor, which happens to be uh, Mike Norris's mother. Uh, her name is Doreen, and they're the neighbors of um, all the Bark plays, and she's played by Carlise Burke, and just uses it sort of as a gift for her, but I guess just to prepare for the you know, the birthday that he's going to have uh, later on. But seeing the, what Chucky's been doing a lot lately, that's when Andy decided to hide him. And I know um, Karen started to hide the doll too at any other place, but he does tend to get out <laughs> more easier than ever. Uh, it just goes on and on. And and then they, then the, one of uh, Andy's friends actually found the Dow because um, well apparently uh, they did took um, the part uh, that's coming from his chest and they actually had to dump it straight into the uh, the trash chutes which then that's where we have the technician who looks a little bit like Jack Black. 
I, I can't believe that they actually got a Jack Black look-alike, but it's not Jack Black. It's uh, actually played by uh, <laughs> uh, Tred uh, Redicope uh, as Gabe. Um, yeah, he's the electrician of the building. So he just go around, you know, fixing everything. Um, you know, he has all the surveillance um, around in his uh, basement. And all the technology he has. Yes, he even has a, a robo uh, vacuum and stuff. In fact, there's even a scene where he's actually uh, was ready to masturbate once he, he spotted uh, a surveillance uh, of uh, Karen who was about to get undressed ready to take a shower or a bath you know before you know, it was all shut down yeah under the control of Chucky because he just uh, took the Chucky doll you know, the buddy doll of course you know just tried to uh, take the battery try to put it back inside fix everything so it'll be up and running What's he do? He just, uh, Chucky just goes around, um, torturing and murdering, um, Gabe by using a table saw. And then once he went down to ground level, well, this is where, um, Chucky goes around, seeing that, uh, one of Annie's friends actually, uh, took the doll of his own. This is where you're gonna love the scene. Um, at the department store, um, he was uh, actually putting all these video footages, and yes, I know he also did put in a lot of recording, uh, <laughs> a, a lot of uh, recording message where where Andy started saying, "Shane's such a dick," and it repeats itself, and then. Yeah, he begins to actually post a lot of videos about what he said and what he did. But Annie was trying to tell Chucky not to show that in front of everyone through all the, the TVs around that he controls. That is until his friend suddenly beats the shit out of him and yeah, they, they started fighting. Yeah, his, uh, his hearing aid fell on the ground. And he actually took his cell phone too, so he's trying to be under control to see how to find where uh, Chucky is at, because he did took the doll. And he's actually with um, the rest of his friends, and they're trying to explain what's going on and why why is Andy acting like this? You know, they're not trying to believe what 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 Chucky's been doing the whole time. Everything. And then it gets worse when Chucky just goes around uh, going after uh, Mike's um, mother. Yep, Doreen locks her inside the car and just drives her around and then crashes and then murders her. And then the final climax where at the department store you know, just when they're already selling all these buddy dolls. Yeah, there's like various versions of, of all these body dolls around. Yes, you even got a bear type uh, doll too. Yes, a teddy bear type. And any other. And then you got uh, <laughs> a uh, an employee at this, the department store just uh, trying to get ready to actually wear the costume before he got stabbed by Chucky and then suddenly Chucky is under control started sending out all the drones and about to ready to attack everyone else all the customers and they're about to they're all running and screaming yeah you know, all the dolls are attacking them uh, either yeah you know, one of them getting stabbed here and there and it's like the final showdown where Annie is about to stop uh, Chucky by actually getting the uh, the chainsaw or a different kind of chainsaw that he uses not to mention Chucky was already uh, trapping uh, his mother Karen 
yeah, all wrapped up and actually tied up and and hang dirt too. You have hanger up. Uh, Mike Norris actually got uh, stabbed, uh, but of course he does live uh, during the finals. During that final uh, showdown, after Andy finally got out, went after uh, Chucky, and then after that, uh, Karen was why? Well, yeah, Karen was about to about to crush uh, Chucky as well, and then until the final shot. When Mike Norris finally came and just says the line from the original film, Friends to the end. See, they can't even get the line right either. Well, by the end of the film, yes, they actually, uh, Annie and his friends just came around, just destroyed all the buddy dolls around, you know, just. You know, beating it up like it's somewhat of a game fight. Destroying them all and hoping that in the future, because, you know, they're having all these malfunction problems, that Henry Castle is going to end up fixing some new dolls and hoping things are going to go for the better. Or would it? <laughs> oh, boy. Um... I'm sorry, man. I think it's one of the worst reboots I've ever seen in recent years. I'm, I'm a bit surprised that a few of my friends, uh, yes, I'm going to give them shout-outs already, because uh, they just won't stop talking about it, and, and they just won't shut up about it either. But but I'm going to show some respect, and, you know, and I'll definitely be happy for them that at least they liked it, but... Sadly, I can't follow the same opinion that they have, but I will respect it. And that is um, Matt Roller, aka Ramble Waff for Life, and Jonathan Lindsay. Yeah. Okay. I love you guys, but I'm sorry. Okay. I can't share that opinion. I wish I had, but I just can't. I know I'm not the only one who hates this film and wasn't looking forward to it. There's um, a Facebook friend that I have uh, named Adam Dicey and even he agrees with me that uh, he hated it. I mean he saw the film and he felt like oh man he wished he never saw this movie ever. So I'm glad to see that there are a few people out there, maybe some people that would agree with me, but for those um, who don't and love the movie for themselves, then that's cool, alright? You know, I respect your opinion and and I think to me, you know, we're all cool here. I mean, hey, it's at least to me, I'm glad that, yeah, we are connecting here. We're, you know, we're not going to be assholes because, you know, everyone doesn't have the same taste that we do so, because this movie is fucking horrible the kills were incredibly laughable all the way around I mean they're very horrific I mean it's I mean there was animal cruelty in that scene I know I know I know I mean animal cruelty does get to me sometimes and I've seen a lot of horror films that got that seen alone but it doesn't mean but sometimes when we do see that it doesn't mean that the movie is bad but it's just the way it's handled these days is just that's not something I want to see nowadays but I, I know I know that's that's just me but it's not because of that it's because the whole film is written incredibly poorly I mean this I didn't like the fact that we got the characters that are done in a very poorly way. I mean, you could tell that they just didn't have the guts to play the roles straight. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I thought Audrey Plaza's performance as Karen is just 
All she does is she does that awkward stare, looking completely bored. I, I just did buy her as the mother of Andy, and she's just totally miscast. I mean, you could have cast someone else other than Audrey Plaza to actually play the role. But it wouldn't matter anyway. Um, Gabriel Bateman, on the other hand, gives one of the worst performance as a child actor, and the fact that he's playing the role that Annie played in the original, I mean, he doesn't do the character any justice whatsoever. I'm sorry. I mean, this, this character's... I mean, this uh, Andy right here is just a total dick. I don't understand. And Mark Campbell, you know, providing the voice of Chucky just didn't work for me. I love the actor, but come on, man. I mean, it's just sad that they had to erase the memories of, of having a serial killer being possessed into a Tao, because at least we know the story. But no, instead we had to go for a creepy, hideous Tao, looks incredibly ugly, and just have all these bad influence coming from TV or, or any of those violent activities that we're seeing. It's just, it's just, uh, just fucking doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, race of talent of other actors joining in. I mean, Brian Tyree, Ty I mean, Brian Tyree Henry's alright, but, um, he could do better. Uh, David Lewis, who played Shane in the movie, yeah, he was a complete asshole. No doubt about it. I mean, I'm not so sure if he got the deserving death, but he pretty much did after being so totally abusive but hey something that I want to see <laughs> uh, th this movie just didn't do any j again I keep repeating myself this this movie just doesn't do any justice to the story the direction was pretty poor paced editing and all I mean it's it's really bad I think it's horrible it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen I wasn't really looking forward to this I didn't even want to see it in the first place but since people just won't stop talking about it and the fact that just they're treating this like like you know because everyone has to be a normal defender these days treating it like it's like they just discover a new item or something in stores or whatever I just don't get it I mean this is just it's a Suspiria and Evil Dead remake all over again that's all it is man you know they they just have no respect to the original films whatsoever or they never respect any of the classics that didn't need to be remade rebooted or reimagination to it not at all And the score is just basically a copy of the original 1988 film. Yeah. And it's done by Bear McCreary. Yes, the same guy who had worked on several films and TV shows. And he did the score for this. Whatever, man. What a waste. I mean, I, I can't believe this movie made $43 million worldwide out of its $10 million budget. I mean, by comparison with um, the original film, which was only $9 million, it only made like 44 So, whatever, man. I'm just going to stick to the original 1988 film the way it was meant to be, because that film had subtlety. This one doesn't. It's not even scary either. The jump scares are just, well, only memorable jump scares, but they were pretty lame. The kills are just, again, horrific. And Tim Madison looks incredibly wasted. It seemed like he's just weeping for his uh, younger Animal House days, too. 
Unbelievable. Also, you're going to love this, but before the movie came out, um, there were a lot of movie posters where they tried to market it after uh, Toy Story 4 was coming out at the same time as this film. Yeah, because I guess for different audience here, for those who can go out to see Toy Story 4, and for others who will go out to see this movie, and for horror fans, or any audience out there, they just... You know, they want to be clever with their marketing, so they had to um, advertise uh, all the Toy Story characters that Chucky is going to end up killing. Yeah, like they, he started ripping off like the Slinky Dow and uh, Woody and and almost about to attack the rest of the other ones. Yeah, so that's what they're trying to do, trying to be clever. That was just stupid, man. Yeah, especially since Toy Story 4 was actually the most highly successful film to come out. Actually made more money than this Child's Play reboot. I guarantee you there's going to be more sequels after this. I wouldn't be surprised. Damn it, Lars Kate Berg and, and Tyler Burton Smith. You guys have no fucking talent whatsoever. You're a bunch of fucking hipsters with low IQ. And that's, that's the problem. This movie's made for hipsters. Who are just better off drinking Don Messini's tears. Yes, I even saw one of their videos. Coming from Madden. Because he, you know, he's been a noble defender over everything. Or sometimes he just loves to rant on a lot of movies here and there. Whatever, man. Fuck this movie. Fuck this reboot. Fuck it all to hell. Because this is the end, friend. So that's the Child's Play reboot, and I give it zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later, much later. Bye!